Good morning. Pastor Joy Richards here from Centerville First United Methodist Church. It's Wednesday. I hope everyone is doing fine. It's April the 14th. Um, a lot going on in the world these days. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this all plays out. Anyway, I hope that you're well and that you're doing fine. Uh, everyone in my family is fine, and as far as I know, in the churches as well. Uh, so today we're going to start a journey with uh, Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. Uh, it'll go on for several days, and uh, I hope that you enjoy the rendering of this word as we relate it to our lives today. So again, good morning. Uh, we will go over this for a couple of days, uh, and we'll dwell on the verses together um, as we go through this. Uh, so listen to the Word of God, Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. Today you might want to have a pencil to write down some verses, because I'll be referring to uh, other verses to proof up this uh, text through the Bible. Isaiah 25, 6 through 9, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from our faces. He will remove His people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in Him and He saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. The Word of God for the people of God. Father God, we come before you and we just praise you for these words that have been in our Bible forever and ever. Isaiah 25. Um, it, you're just so awesome, God. We can't even comprehend you. Uh, but we do thank you for these words, and we do commit our lives to listening to you and being uh, those who uh, read the Bible and think about what it says and and uh, try to apply it to our lives, Lord God. So we just thank you for this verse today and the next couple of days as we look at it in detail Praise you, Lord God, and thank you. May it apply to our lives. In Christ we pray. Amen. So today, our scripture invites us to a banquet. Oh my, isn't that exciting? Isaiah 25, 6. It says, Cast away a shroud, pronounces death vanquished, wipes away tears, and takes away disgrace and leaves us with the hope of salvation. So that's the summary of what we, we just read. So we hear an invitation to a banquet, Isaiah 25, 6. Quote, in this mountain, it speaks of Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Uh, 24, 3, Isaiah 24, 3 is your reference to that if you want to read it later. So in this mountain speaks to Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the junction between heaven and earth, the place where the Lord meets with man. Here the Lord himself is setting a table for a mighty feast. It's, quote, a feast of fat things, as of well-aged wines, of marrow with fat, and well-aged wines well-refined, and all people are invited. It appears that Jesus used this. He used this passage as a basis for his parable of the great banquet told to us in Luke 14, 15 through 24. So if you want to go back and read that parable, look up Luke 14, verse 15 through 24, the parable of the great banquet. And Jesus uh, refers back to this Isaiah uh, scripture we have today with that. 
The first people to be invited, you see, did not even have the courtesy to reply to the invitation. They were invited and just disregarded it. But when the master still graciously sent his servant to bring them when the feast was ready, they with one accord made excuses. And you can look that up in Luke 14, verse 18. With one accord, they made excuses. They, they said no. For example, one had bought some real estate, so couldn't go to the banquet. Uh, they had to go and inspect the real estate. And one had just bought um, five teams of oxen and they had to go and inspect the oxen. So no, they couldn't go to the banquet. And one had just gotten married and therefore had other priorities of being newly married. So, oh no, they couldn't go to the banquet. So all of these excuses, you see, disqualified them from ever attending the Messianic banquet, from ever getting to go to the banquet. Listen again, quote, For I say to you that none of those men and women who were invited shall taste of my supper, said, the, said Jesus. That's referenced in Luke 14, verse 24. So, hearers of the gospel, those who hear the gospel, are not to be like the people in Jesus' parable who have excuses upon excuses for not accepting him as Christ for coming to the banquet. Goes on, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith in the earth? Reference Luke, 4, Luke 18, verse 8. Friends, what does this mean? What is this part of the reading that I'm going to uh, discuss with you and have been discussing with you mean to you today? What does it mean to us? Uh, and how many ways can we relate, relate to it? How many times have we been this way? Uh, for sure, a banquet exists. We can discuss what that might mean, but it does exist. So what do you think about that? What is this banquet? And what is it to us? It says hearers, those who hear, those who listen to the gospel. Uh, what do you think the banquet might mean? Perhaps we can together perceive, maybe, that it's Christ's invitation to become a believer. Wow. That it's Christ's invitation to become a believer, that this banquet is Christ explaining his invitation to become a believer? We're all invited, you see, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. We all either accept or we decline the invitation. So you see, it's important to us, it's very important to us, uh, to know that Jesus is our salvation, that we need a Savior, to accept uh, now, if we haven't already, the invitation to become children of God through believing in Jesus Christ as Lord of our life, as the only Son of God, our Savior, who died and is now risen from the grave, who intercedes before us, before God, uh, you know, presents us to God as those who are his, his followers, those who hear the gospel, presents us to God as forgiven souls, those who have been forgiven of their trespasses. And again, the parable that Jesus shared says this, Listen, for I say to you that none of those men or women who were invited shall taste of my supper. Luke fourteen twenty four as a reference. You see, if you say no, then you say no. And you won't be invited again. And Jesus says that. It's our choice. We get to choose our future, our destiny. Either we choose now on earth, Jesus is Lord, 
accepting the invitation to the banquet, or we decline. We say no, and we never get to accept the invitation to the banquet. Friends, how much easier can glorified language be said? How much easier can the mystery of faith language be said? Can we be talking about the future of heaven here? Yes, we are. We're talking about our future in heaven by accepting the invitation to believe in Jesus Christ and be invited to the banquet. So come, come along. Accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accept him as the only Son of God, as our Savior and Lord. Savior for what, you might say. I have it pretty good here. What do I need Jesus for? Well, from eternal separation from God is what you need Jesus for. You see, on earth, everyone gets to participate and enjoy the garden, all the wonderful things that God has blessed us with on this earth. But after death, the absence of God makes all the things that he put here gone as well. You will be separated. You will be in darkness, the Bible says. There will be fire and brimstone, the lake of fire. There will be pain, suffering. It will smell bad. It's all badness 24-7 for eternity. All bad everywhere in all places because God will not be present nor his giftings. You won't have sunshine. You won't have trees. You won't have birds. You won't have flowers. You won't even have grass. You'll just have fire and darkness, a total separation from God. Hearers of the gospel, hear this. Our job is to convince others of the true reality of living. It's to know the risen Lord Jesus, friends, Jesus as Christ. Jesus has risen indeed. We celebrate that in Eastertide, this time after Easter Sunday that we walk out. Easter's not over, it's called Eastertide. We have many more days of Easter. So today, you're invited to the banquet. Accept the invitation. Accept the Lord as your savior and be seated at the banquet. Don't miss out, friends. You'll be forever, ever regretting it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll pick up on this tomorrow and go on to the next part of this holy reading of Isaiah. Uh, let's pray now for those who are ill. Father God, come into our hearts and minds. We lift all of those who are sick and we pray blessings upon them and wellness over them. Uh, we ask that our leaders uh, come to good decisions uh, and that our economy is open and that our wellness is uh, gifted to us, that uh, meds are available. Uh, we come against coronavirus and all that's related to it and all its mutations forever and ever, that we get control of it like we did polio uh, years ago like penicillin when it came down for all those infections. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, have a wonderful day. Do something special today with the Lord. Draw nearer to Him. Um, I gave you many references today. That's something you can go back. Um, love you, love you, love you. All is well. All is well. And all shall be well. Until tomorrow, bye now.